This is Michael Popak, Legal AF, former controller for the Trump Organization. Jeff McConney's testimony in the New York civil fraud trial case is the gift that keeps on giving. His testimony and cross-examination by the New York Attorney General, Mr. Amer, establishes the conspiracy between Alan Weisselberg, Jeff McConney, and Donald Trump, and by extension, Eric Trump, and the fraudulent statement of financial condition of Donald Trump and the Trump Organization, used by them to obtain giant loans they weren't entitled to, obtain insurance they weren't entitled to, get approvals they weren't entitled to, get project approval they weren't entitled to, get surety bonds for construction they weren't entitled to, and all the rest, which is at the heart of the civil fraud case. What did McConaughey do? He did the thing that Donald Trump denied that he was involved with. Donald Trump has consistently denied, including when he was on the stand just a couple of weeks ago, seems seems like uh, seems like yesterday, that he had very little involvement, Donald Trump said, with the statement of financial condition, which is at the heart of the case, the listing of assets and liabilities to show net worth, which was a requirement of many of the banks that Donald Trump, for instance, Deutsche Bank required Donald Trump to show a personal net worth of over two and a half billion, with a B, dollars, and about you know $500 million of liquid assets. So you have to have assets on a sheet that show that, and that's the statement of financial condition at the heart of the case. Donald Trump tried to be hands off. I didn't know about it. Never saw it, never looked at it. When they showed him in his deposition, Donald Trump, handwritten blue ink notes that were from McConaughey, uh, annotating the financial statements and putting a note that this needs to be reviewed by Donald J. Trump before it goes out the door for approval, tying Donald Trump to knowledge of the falsity in the financial statements. He said, I don't know whose ink, I don't know whose blue ink that is. The New York Attorney General knew who it was. It was Jeff McConaughey. When Eric Trump testified at the trial, just at the trial itself, I wasn't involved with the statement of financial condition. Constantly trying to dump on Mazers, the outside accountants, by saying, I rely on accountants for that. I don't get involved with statements of financial condition. He had to walk that back after he was cross-examined cross -examined with a document that showed that Jeff McConaughey wanted Eric Trump while he was running things, while daddy was in the White House, to review the statement of financial condition the same way daddy Trump did for all the years at issue prior to him becoming president. Eric Trump took over that job. He got the big desk like in succession. And he had to then uh, respond to, to McConaughey. When McConaughey, this is the bombshell out of his testimony, tying him to the conspiracy with Alan Weisselberg, Donald Trump, and Eric Trump, and then, of course, Don Jr., to the, the fraudulent financial statements. They put a document when he was being a direct examined, McConaughey said that this was the order of operation. This was the flow chart. This was the workflow, right? That he would prepare an initial draft of the statement of financial conditions. He would give it to Alan Weisselberg, the now disgraced felon uh, chief financial officer, who's not a CPA, not a certified public accountant for Donald Trump, who would then send it to Mazur's, to look at it, and then they would print the final. And he purposely left out until he was cross-examined by Mr. Amer for the New York Attorney General's office, the pit stop in between. Here's how it really went based on the testimony that was adduced at trial and cross-examination, right? Compelled testimony. It went from Alan, it went from Jeff McConaughey preparing it with lots of notes and lots of scribbles. He was known as the czar of the spreadsheet keeping track of everything, making questionable, making notes for questions to be answered by the owners of the company. For instance, on the statement of financial condition, should we list deals that aren't yet closed, but are forecasted, meaning deals we'd like to do? That would be like you and me listing on our personal financial statement, some multi-billion dollar house down the street that we have our eye on, but we haven't gotten around to buying yet and listing that as part of our financial assets. So that financial statement, let's just take 2014 or 2015 for an example, according to the New York Attorney General, was inflated, was cooked about two or three hundred million uh, uh, million dollars more than it was worth, right? Already a fraud, a $300 million fraud sitting on that financial statement. And what it, how it really went is it went McConaughey to Weisselberg and then for the uh, given time period, to Donald Trump himself. In fact, they put up an exhibit, we'll show it here on this hot take, DJT to final review 
in blue ink. That was from McConaughey. And when it wasn't Donald Trump, it was Eric Trump. Eric Trump already said, as I said earlier, on his testimony, I wasn't involved. I was pouring concrete. He never, this guy touches hands. He's There's no calluses on those hands. He never poured concrete. He, but he certainly was involved with the statement of financial condition because McConaughey put it in front of him with notes that said, have E-T, whatever his initials are. I like E-T. Have E-T <laughs> review, Eric Trump review these financial statements when daddy was in the White House, tying Eric Trump to the fraudulent financial statement before it was presented to counterparties like lenders and insurance companies. Heart disease, blood clots, strokes, and kidney failure. This could all be found on the back of an ibuprofen bottle. And to top it all off, ibuprofen doesn't even get to the main cause of your pain and swelling problems. It's only temporary pain relief. And it's only masking the true problem which is inflammation. Ibuprofen isn't a solution to your pain. That's why you need to stop what you're doing and head over to getnativepath.com slash legal AF. You need to check out their Native Path krill oil. Researchers are saying to add this Antarctic super nutrient to your diet. I'm talking about omega-3 fatty acids but not just any form of omegas. These are omega-3 fatty acids sourced from wild-caught krill. The omega-3 content from krill oil has been shown to support healthy blood pressure, circulation, brain health, as well as reduce inflammation, swelling, and joint pain. In fact, it can outperform ibuprofen, Advil, and Tylenol. And it doesn't have the dangerous side effects mentioned above either. Better yet, for a limited time, you can grab Native Path and Arctic Krill Oil for as low as $23 a bottle. Just go to getnativepath.com slash legalaf right now to get your special offer for being a part of the Legal AF audience. That's getnativepath.com slash legalaf to pick up your bottle of Native Path Krill Oil. See, the way that McConaughey misled or tried to mislead the judge is that he tried to argue that it was all an internal issue and the last stop on the train was Mazers, the outside accountants, and Donald Trump and Eric Trump weren't involved. But his own penmanship did him in on the stand. You can't write notes and have questions in there for the boss and not and and then take the same position at the same time that's a completely inconsistent and irreconcilable that the boss never saw these things or wasn't involved with these things. In fact, the attorney general can conclude in front of the judge and argue in front of the judge that not only was Trump involved, but he made the ultimate decisions to include several hundred millions of dollars of deals that hadn't yet been actual actualized, hadn't yet been accomplished had only been forecasted on his financial statement in order to boost the numbers, right? In order to cook the books. And his handwriting is all over it because McConaughey's handwriting is all over it. And Eric Trump's handwriting is all over it and fingerprints are all over it because McConaughey's handwriting is all over it. And that's where we're coming with the case. There's another issue that came up. These documents with McConaughey's handwriting right? The handwriting on the wall from Jeff McConaughey was not turned over by the Trump organization during discovery in the case. It was turned over, uh, you know, uh, by pulling teeth from Mazers, the outside accountant, in a subpoena process in which Mazers tried to battle with the New York attorney general in front of the judge and was then compelled to turn over all their documents. And there was the cache of documents with McConaughey's signature on it that Trump organization and Trump conveniently either destroyed, which is called spoliation of evidence, which is a bad thing and a crime, or or they just don't have a document retention system, again, an indicator of that there's persistent fraud going on in an organization. And so Jeff McConaughey had to testify to all these things. I mean, they put up, just to show you how meticulous the New York Attorney General is, they put up the exhibit, which is uh, People's Exhibit 3054. That's how many documents the uh, New York Attorney General put up in the case so far. 3,000 exhibits. For those that question, why does Judge Angoron need a law clerk to help him process information and understand a case as the trier of fact? Because there's been 3,000 exhibits presented. But these are key exhibits, right? Handwriting is not just on the wall. Handwriting is on the documents. McConaughey's handwriting directing traffic, sending the documents that are fraudulent to Donald Trump and Eric Trump when he was in charge to approve 
to make the key decisions about whether, hey, boss, you know, I'll put this in my speech. Hey, boss, should we include the assets we haven't acquired yet on your asset sheet? And the answer to that from Donald Trump was yes. Yes, please do it twice. And those are the very statement of financial conditions that are fraudulent and inflated, used by Donald Trump and the organization to go get more money than he was entitled to at banks, to get insurance companies, to insure projects, to pull permits, to do construction. And that is the case. And who better to tell it, even if he didn't do it in a cooperative fashion under penalty of perjury than Jeff McConney, the same the same controller who's been with the uh, Trump organization reporting to Alan Weisselberg, the chief financial officer for more than 30 years, who got immunity in order to testify against the Trump organization last year in the tax fraud case in which a jury, a state Manhattan jury, found 17 counts of felony tax evasion by the Trump organization while McConney was on the was on the uh, switch, right? While he was on watch. And so this is compelling testimony. This linkage that McConney didn't want to make in his direct testimony, but had to make in his cross-examination by the New York Attorney General. This linkage that, hey, you left out something, Donald Trump and Eric Trump's involvement in approving the fraudulent financial statements, which lie at the heart of the case. We'll continue to analyze trial testimony just like this one. I've been a trial lawyer for a long time in courtrooms just like this one. And I bring this kind of analysis, one place, Midas Touch Network, Legal AF, it is what you think, that title, at the corner of law, justice, and politics on the Midas Touch Network, Wednesday nights, Saturday nights, 8 p.m., audio podcast platforms, wherever you can get it. Leave me a thumbs up for this hot take. It helps with the ratings and me on the air. Until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.